Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I first want to start off by kind of apologizing for not making a video for a little bit. Um, we kind of had some craziness going on, but for the most part I actually have got good news on a bunch of things, but of course we've got another little new complication that's come up, but overall everything's actually looking a lot better. To start off with, I do want to mention that my allergies are killing me. <laughs> so if I have kind of a really red looking nose and I sound pretty nasally, it's, that's why it's, it's been pretty brutal. But last week I actually got um, my flu shot finally. Things kept coming up and I kept forgetting and then, I don't know, basically somehow I ended up with not getting my flu shot until just last week. And following that, like, I guess it makes your immune system go down for like a week or two. So I ended up actually getting the flu <laughs> like the next day because they said with the lower immune system and everything and the fact that I was just like, I basically had spent the whole day in doctor's offices that day. So like it, I don't know, somehow I just ended up with like a stomach flu. So that was part of why I didn't do a video. I really wasn't feeling well and my allergies had started kicking in and I also found out that my iron levels are low which I guess is really common in pregnancy but that kind of contributed to everything because it makes you more tired and so that along with next door they started construction. On either side of our house there's just empty lots and they had told us when we bought the house last year that they would be building the houses within the next five years and I guess they decided this year was the year to do it so they started building a house right next door to us. So there's been a lot of noise too so there was a couple of days where I actually felt like um, well enough to go ahead and do a video but it was so extremely loud there was no way I could have like it there's the little breaks that they do in between are literally like a minute or two so there would have been no way for me to film without having just a whole bunch of noise so if my next few videos have some background noise that's what's going on I'm hoping that it's not going to be too bad and that I can somehow work around it and I'm hoping that they get done before we have a newborn because the side that they picked to start on just happens to be the side where our master bedroom is so that's like <laughs> it's very loud like one of the things that I've been going through lately that everyone tends to go through about third trimester is having problems sleeping at night so I've been having just the worst time sleeping at night, especially with like my allergies and everything being so bad. It's not helped things. It just kind of has made it worse because I try to catch up on my sleep during the day some because for whatever reason it's been a little bit easier to try to sleep during the day instead of at night. But that's not been happening with this construction. It's like they start at 7.30 in the morning and it's bright and early. They start with all the machines and everything and then they go all the way until 4.30 in the afternoon. So it's it's been interesting over the past couple weeks. I did get good news though. I no longer have my heart monitor on so that I'll, when I show you my bump you'll see it's gone. Thank goodness I got so tired of that thing. But it's gone and they actually got all of the results back on it. They said that my heart is actually doing better than it was at the beginning. So they've actually cleared me heart-wise for um, a normal vaginal delivery. So that was awesome. They said I don't even have to go back to see the cardiologist anymore while I'm pregnant. She does want me to come back after I give birth. She said it's six weeks after they want to do some stress tests and everything to look at my heart a bit more just overall and see what's going on but for the pregnancy and labor and delivery she said that she has cleared me for that so that's awesome and I'm no longer on any restrictions for my heart which was just like a huge weight lift in so that was like a big deal and that was really good to hear uh, the other thing that I found out which was like two days after was I found out that they did a scan and they said that the placenta has completely moved away from my cervix so it's not even considered a low-lying placenta anymore it's totally okay so that I got all my restrictions lifted for that too 
and I've been cleared for a normal vaginal delivery for that too. So that was like just awesome that I got back to back good news on those. I did do my gestational diabetes um, test and everything and that came back negative so I'm good on that. Everything came back normal on that. There was what they did notice on the last ultrasound was that for whatever reason I do have extra fluid which apparently happens in like 1% of pregnancies from what I heard. It can either happen because of gestational diabetes, which they already checked me for, they said I don't have that, or it can be because of like a fetal abnormality, but they did so many tests at the beginning because I have had a, a history with a few miscarriages. They did extra like chromosomal tests and everything, so there's no abnormalities with him. He came back completely fine, so the only third variable that it could be is literally unknown. <laughs> so for whatever reason, some women end up with this where they have too much fluid and it makes it to where like your uterus measures ahead and everything. So like when the doctor measures your like fundal height, like she measured mine and I'm measuring like two weeks ahead of what I should be because of the extra fluid. So, and he's got hiccups right now, so it's distracting me. But because of the extra fluid, my uterus is bigger than what it should be. And on top of that, I have a, a baby that's been measuring big, so he's measuring ahead. So it's just kind of a couple different things there. But basically what it means is we're still going to have like weekly ultrasounds, they said, because they need to make sure that I guess the fluid doesn't get to be too much. Because the issue is uh, basically, it can put a lot of extra strain on your uterus and everything and it can even kind of trick it to where it thinks that it's farther than it is so it's you you are at higher risk for early labor preterm labor so that's kind of something that i've been hearing the whole time anyways with the different issues we've had and all that so i mean it's not it's not totally new but at the same time it is a little frustrating because it was like we just got so much good news and like so many things like like that were like lifted and gone and out of the picture and I was just like oh my gosh I get to have like a normal end of the pregnancy and everything I get to be like like everybody else there's nothing crazy <laughs> but of course it's like oh there's one little thing <laughs> so I'm just like I mean at this point I'm kind of like I'm just grateful that it's not like the my heart or the placenta because those were honestly more scary to me. At this point, since I've gotten so far in the pregnancy, if I were to go into early labor, his odds of, you know, not having any complications or issues have dropped a lot. So that's making me feel better. Literally each week that goes by is like a huge relief and it's just like okay like we're that much closer to where it's gonna be okay if I go into labor so I'm like hoping I can get through the next like if I can get just into April like my goal right now is even to get into April and then at that point my goal will be to try to get as close as I can to the end of April and then I'll be really happy the only thing is they did say that depending on how big and how much extra fluid uh, I have and how big baby gets and everything they worry about like your uterus basically stretching too much and thinning out too much so at some point they have to, that's one of the reasons why they're going to be doing these weekly scans is at some point they can hit that mark where it's like okay we need to just go ahead and induce you the other issue with having too much fluid is the baby has more room to move around so baby is more likely to end up like breech or just in not a good position to be in because he's got a lot of more extra room than what most babies would have at that point to where he can flip around. So sometimes as it gets closer, if they can catch on a scan that he's head down and in the ideal position, then if he's far enough along and all of his, everything looks great, then they'll just go ahead and decide to induce you right then and there because he's in that ideal position and they don't want to risk him moving. So it just kind of depends, but it kind of explains why I was like seeing some people I hadn't seen in a while and they were all like, oh my gosh, you look like farther than you are. Like everybody's reaction was that. And I was kind of like, yeah, I mean, I'm shorter and I know that you tend to kind of 
pop a little bit more because there's not really room for baby and I just was kind of tacking it up to that but it makes sense now because I really do have like a bigger uterus than someone who's at my my point which I didn't mention until now <laughs> I just realized so I am 29 weeks right now going into 30 weeks this weekend so finally in that 30 week mark I can't believe it it's just such a relief because like I said I just that's like five more weeks or so of being in the clear and not having to worry so much about going into early labor or anything like that we did have a couple little scares with like when I had the flu last week they had me go into the emergency room well it was like labor and delivery they just had me go in there because they wanted to monitor everything and just kind of check my fluid levels and everything make sure that I wasn't too dehydrated because uh, it was like an intestinal bug and I'm not gonna get into that but they just worry that basically you can get too dehydrated and I guess it can even cause contractions um, when you have like an intestinal thing like that it releases the same hormone they said as like what causes contractions so your body can be tricked and think that oh it's time we need to start doing contractions and everything and I was having some pains so they had to just make sure that everything was okay and that they didn't need to like give me some meds or anything to stop anything so everything tested out pretty good again they just want me to kind of bring up my iron levels so they gave me a prescription for that other than that I don't think there, there's really too much to go over except we did a hospital tour for right now we went ahead and pre-registered and everything at a hospital that if we basically decided if I do go into labor early this is the one that we want it to be at because they have the NICU unit and everything that he would have to be like our other hospital that we want they are actually adding a whole new expansion and everything a whole new birth like wing or tower or whatever so it's a whole new birth building and it's gonna be like amazing but it's not done until May 1st <laughs> so until then like and that will be like the best NICU unit in this area it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be perfect it's so much closer to where we are too so it would be just like a 10 minute drive for us but in the meantime they said that if since that's not done they don't really have that great of a NICU right now that's like functional so he would ha if I gave birth there he would have to be like life flighted over to the one of the nearby hospitals that does have a good NICU unit so he would be in one hospital and I would be in another and we definitely don't want that so instead we're gonna we're set up to be at this one but once like the beginning of March comes or May comes around we're planning on just switching and we're gonna have everything set up for that other one because I mean no joke even the rooms and everything for like like me and everything it's so much better you you even get like a queen size bed for you and your partner to sleep in at night instead of your partner being on some like fold out really uncomfortable looking thing or recliner or whatever like I mean nothing against the hospital that we're at right now that we're set up with but it's just it's just like most hospitals where it's kind of a little outdated and doesn't look the most comfortable and there's other features and everything that like we're not as crazy about the new one once it's done like they'll have everything in room to even check baby and go through all of his first like as soon as they're born they have to check a bunch of stuff they literally will have everything in the room to do that so that baby never has to leave you or leave the room so they do everything in there and all of their rooms have um, tubs for you to try birthing in for a little bit or like laboring in for a little bit versus like this one where it's it's first come first serve and there's only like three of them so there's just little things like that it's you also get 24 hour room service which is important because like from everyone I, I know and everything it's I mean you kind of eat when you can and you're on a different schedule because everything's just crazy like you could have given birth at like 
5, 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. So you're sleeping kind of during the day and then like they quit serving food like at a certain point and you're just kind of on your own so someone has to like go out and get something. So it's just kind of that nice added convenience of like the food that's just always available. They also said that it's available to you and your partner versus most hospitals where it's just like one meal a lot of times that they get for your partner and, and they're kind of on their own. It's just kind of another nice thing where it's like he doesn't have to worry about leaving and like getting food or anything like that. It's And I like the idea of him being able to sleep with me just because that's what I'm used to. And I know like it seems like such a little thing but like after everything that's, that'll be going on, it's just kind of nice to know that he'll be comfortable and I'll be more comfortable that way. I mean, there's just so many things that it just seems like a dream and I'm really hoping we can wait until May 1st and have the baby there at that new center because it's just gonna be so nice and so much closer to home. So we have dogs and that'll be easier for him to go home and let them out and everything and come back. So. It's just a lot of different things. The other hospital that we're registered at now is about half an hour or so away, half an hour, 45 minutes away, and that adds up. And with my mom, she had very quick labors. So my, my her labor with me was an, um, three hours, and my sister's was an hour and a half. And I have no idea, obviously, how long my labor is gonna be. It's not necessarily gonna be the same way or anything. But just knowing that, too, is just another thing where I'm like, it's kind of far, we could hit traffic, it could take us easily, if we hit rush hour, it could take us easily an hour to even get there. And, I mean, it's just, it would be nice to be closer. <laughs> so, enough of my rant with that. <laughs> but, I will go ahead and show you my bump real quick. Here's the side. The front. Side. Side, front, and side. That'll be all for this week. I am going to go ahead and upload a What's in My Hospital Bag video, so that should be up coming up with this one. Thank you. Bye.